This video is going to have a look at methods within classes with particular reference to the parameters that are passed to methods. Let's consider this particular computer program here. And before I go on to look at it in detail, let me say at the outset there's a mistake in the program. And we'll discuss that mistake as the video unfolds. But here you can see that we have a class. And within the class, we have defined this function here, which will be a method within the class. Well, hopefully it will be a method. We'll see in a moment that in its current form, it ain't going to work. Now, on this particular line, what I'm doing, I'm creating an instance of the class. And this is a name that will be bound to that instance, i.e. bound to the object, which is an instance of the demo class. On this line, you can see I've got a print statement. And within the print statement, what I have, I have dot notation. And on this side of the dot, you can see I have a name which is bound to the object. And on this side of the dot, you can see that I have double it, which is going to invoke this particular method here. And when it invokes this method, this value of 2 will be passed to here. And on this line, this will have the value of 2. I'm then going to multiply that by 2 to give 4. That 4 will then be assigned to doubled value. And this line will then return that doubled value, which obviously in this case will be 4. And 4 will be returned to this position in the code. And this will print that value of 4 on the screen for us to look at. So let's see what happens. Well, it crashes. Now, the reason it hasn't worked, if we look at the type error, it says double it takes one positional argument, but two were given. Now, what does that mean? Well, this is double it here, and you can see in the brackets here, it has this variable name value. And this two was to be passed to it. But if we look here, it says that this has got two arguments. In other words, two were given. Well, if you remember from the other videos in the playlist, the ones just before this, we discussed this, and what in fact happens, it is implied that this particular method here will receive the ID of the current instance that it is dealing with. So what we have here is the wrong syntax. Yes, it's correct that we want this 2 to go to this particular value, but within the brackets here, we have to put the word self. So let's now have a look at the program and its runtime, as you can see here. And the difference is, is I've put self here, as you can see. So when this program runs, let's just quickly discuss it. This line is going to actually produce the instance of the class. This is the message. And what we have to realize is when this message is sent to the object, this receives the ID of that object. Remember, every object has a unique ID. And this value of 2 here is sent to here, to the variable I have actually called value. And of course, on this line, that's going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. That's going to be assigned to doubled value. Here we return that doubled value, which gets returned to here, and we print it out, and you can see we print the value of 4. Let's now consider this computer program here. You can see I've got a class, a demo class, and within it I have got this definition here, and I have this notion of something that's going to take in x and y. We're going to add them together that result is going to be assigned to this particular variable here, and then we're going to return that variable. This will create an instance of the class. This line will print what this message returns, or that's the hope. Because what I'm hoping to happen here is for this 2 to go to that x, and for this 3 to go to that y, so when these are then added up inside this definition, we'll get 5, and 5 will be returned. But when we run this program, this is what we will get. And we have an error occurring. And if you have a look at this line, it says, add them takes two positional arguments, but three were given. 
In other words, if we have a look at this here, you can see there are two in view that correspond to the two that are put here. So this two should go to the X and this three should go to the Y. But remember, when we have a message like this is, this is being sent to the instance of the class. By implication, this message also sends the ID of the object that's currently being messaged. So what we have got here is the missing self. So let's have a look at how we can amend this program so that it works. And you can see that I've put the word self here. So when we now come to this message, what's going to happen, pass to self will be the ID of the object. And this two will then go to the X and this three will then go to the Y. On this line, the 2 and the 3 are added up to give 5. 5 is given to added values. We return that value of 5 to this position. And of course, it then gets printed out. And you can see we get the value of 5. So what I'm really looking at here with these two simple programs is the fact if you find yourself having two actual parameters in this position, you have to remember that when you define it within the class, you need three, one more, and that one more is the self. So if, for example, in this position, which is not shown here, there were seven parameters, it means up here that you would need eight. It's always one bigger. You always have to remember to put this self in. Let's have a look at this computer program again. And it's a simple program that has a class, and within the class it has this method. And the method doesn't really do much, does it? It just adds up two numbers. And we return the addition of those two numbers. And on this line, we create an instance of this class. And this line, we print what's returned from the method that was invoked by this message. And of course, if we're passing in two and three, we expect the result to come out as five, as you can see it does here. Now I'm going to show you something that I don't recommend you do, but I want to show it you nevertheless. And it is here. What you can see is I've got a class and I've got a definition. And if you look in this area, I've removed the word self. But it's exactly the same in all other respects. But on this line here, you can see I've gone straight to the print. In other words, I am not creating an instance of the class as I did here. In this program, what I've done here, I've used a class name, then a full stop, and then add them, passing the two and the three. Now, does this work? Well, let's have a look what the runtime is. It gives us five. So the answer is yes, it does work. So here you can see I haven't used the word self, but also what I'm saying is I have to use the name of the class to enable this particular piece of code here to be executed. Now this doesn't fit in with object-oriented programming. The purpose of a class is to allow for instances of the classes to be created, in other words, objects. Because object-oriented program is a community of objects communicating with each other by sending each other messages. If you look at what's happened here, we're not creating any objects. Now, Python allows you to write your code in different paradigms, such as functional, such as procedural, and object-oriented programming paradigms, but also a mixture of all three. And it's up to you what you want to do. But if you were belonging to a software house that developed all of their software using the object-orientated paradigm, they'll be doing that right across the life cycle. They would be doing analysis, for example, that was concept-based. They would be doing design supported by UML diagrams that worked on the assumption that you have lots of objects communicating with each other. Not having classes actually being accessed directly, asking for the code within those classes to be executed. But you pay your money, you take your choice. It's up to you what you want to do when you write your code. But bear in mind that when you're writing code, it's very tempting to think the only thing programmers do is sit in front of a computer screen typing away all day. 
In fact, they design, and one of the things they will design with is the UML artifacts that help produce good programs before you start writing one line of code. So, although this is possible, I wouldn't use it. So I'm recommending do not use this approach if you want to write object oriented code. The one to use is this approach, where you quite clearly say, right, I've got a class, and if I want to use what's in the class, I'm going to create an instance of that class. So remember, a class is a template from which objects are created. And an object oriented program is a community of objects all messaging each other and passing each other bits of data to work on. So don't, in my view, write a class and allow the code in that class to be directly accessed. Make sure you write your code in such a way that instances of your classes are produced, i.e. objects, which brings home the fact that this self-parameter is the thing that you should be using all the time because you should write your code to ensure that you're making your code object oriented in nature. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.